William Madsen was born in Lusacil, Sweden in 1849, an area known for its fishing and sailing. He was orphaned at an early age and began his career at sea when he was 10 years old working as a handy boy on Swedish coastal ships. By 1863, at the age of 14, he arrived in New York City, already an experienced seaman. And in 1867, when he was only 18, Matson made his way to San Francisco. Over the next decade, Matson sailed on numerous vessels on the San Francisco Bay and surrounding rivers. During that time, Matson struck up a friendship with sugar tycoon Klaus Spreckels while working on his family yacht, the Lurleen. The name was derived from a variation of Lorelei a Rhine River siren from German folklore. And if you like the name Lurleen, Matson is the guy for you. With help and mentorship from Spreckles, Matson purchased a one-fourth share ownership of the Emma Claudina, a three-masted schooner. Matson would captain the vessel on its first voyage to Hawaii in 1882. The venture was immensely successful, transporting plantation stores to the Hawaiian Islands and returning with cargoes of sugar. In 1887, Matson sold the Emma Claudina and purchased a brigantine, which he would name the Lurleen. This is the second Lurleen, not to be confused with the 80 million other Lurleens you'll hear in this story. This new ship doubled the former vessel's carrying capacity, and over the next three decades, Matson would continue to grow the business, building a vital commercial lifeline between Hawaii and the mainland. Matson would marry three times. It was said that he met his third wife, Lily Lowe, on a voyage on the second Lurleen where she was traveling to Hilo to teach in a missionary school. They had a daughter in September 1890, and you'll never guess what they named her. It was Lurleen. As the Hawaiian economy began to thrive, tourists took notice, and Matson would soon operate ships that could carry both cargo and passengers. In 1908, they would launch a freight ship that could carry 51 passengers. The ship would be named Lurleen after Matson's daughter, Lurleen. We'll call this one the Lurleen 3 if we ever mention her again, but we won't. On October 11th, 1917, at the age of 67, Captain William Matson died. He left behind a thriving fleet of 14 of the fastest and most modern passenger and freight ships operating on the Pacific. After his death, his son from his first marriage, Walter Matson, would take over the now extensive Matson business and continue the company's booming freight service and would greatly expand their growing passenger service with the purchase of the Oceanic Steamship Company in 1926, which gave them three modest passenger vessels. The following year, Lurleen Bernice Roth's husband, William P. Roth, would become president of Matson Lines. That year, they commissioned their largest passenger vessel yet. The new ship was designed by William Francis Gibbs and built by William Cramp and Sons in Philadelphia. The SS Malalo was fast, modern, and designed with the latest safety innovations. During her sea trials, she would survive a major collision with a Norwegian freighter, greatly impressing everyone, including the United States Navy. Matson Lines would further increase their passenger service with two more ships, the Mariposa and the Monterey, both launched in 1931. In the following year, they would round out their great white fleet of passenger liners with the Lurleen. The Lurleen that this video is actually about. Lurleen would cement Matson Line's dominance over the Hawaiian passenger trade. She was the last of the four white Matson liners designed by William Francis Gibbs. The Malolo, Mariposa, Monterey, and Lurleen were similar in design, each slightly larger than the last. The four ships were built to a high standard of luxury and safety, designed to cater primarily to wealthy tourists. Matson Lines quickly became known for offering top quality service, and the Grand Manor of Matson became a common slogan. Lurleen was built by the Bethlehem Shipbuilding Corporation at the Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. She was launched on July 12, 1932, and christened by Lurleen Matson Roth. The new ship was 18,163 tons, 632 feet long, and had a beam of 79 feet. She was powered by twin-geared steam turbines that could produce 28,450 ship horsepower and powered twin screws. She had a service speed of 20.5 knots and could reach a maximum of 22 knots. Her initial configuration could accommodate 715 passengers, 
with 475 in first class and 240 in tourist. She had a crew of 359. Her original interiors were fairly traditional, reminiscent of the Grand Hotel style common on Atlantic liners of the time. On January 12, 1933, the Lurleen left New York City on her maiden voyage bound for San Francisco. After her maiden voyage, she began operating an express San Francisco to Honolulu service along with her sister ship, the Malolo. Lurleen was immediately popular and quickly became a household name synonymous with Hawaii. She was known as the most glamorous and exclusive way to travel to the island and carried celebrities like Betty Davis and Clark Gable, and probably a few dozen more Lurleens give or take. In December of 1934, the aviator Amelia Earhart traveled on the Lurleen along with her Lockheed Vega, which was secured to the deck. The trip positioned Earhart for her record-breaking solo flight from Honolulu to Oakland in January 1935. Lurleen operated without major incident until December 7, 1941. She was halfway from Honolulu to San Francisco when she received word of the attack on Pearl Harbor. She raced through the remainder of her voyage at her maximum speed, arriving safely in San Francisco. She would soon return to Hawaii in a convoy alongside her sisters, the Mariposa and the Monterey, carrying troops and supplies to the island. Lurleen would prove a vital asset to the war effort, transporting troops and supplies and often traveling to Australia. She even carried the Australian Prime Minister, John Curtin, to the United States for a meeting with President Roosevelt. On one voyage, a Royal Australian Air Force trainee, Arthur Harrison, was put on watch without adequate training. He spotted a line of bubbles off the ship's starboard bow. Not realizing what he was looking at, he pointed out the site to other nearby trainees when the ship took a hard 90 degree turn to port. Fortunately, the torpedo ended up missing by a long shot, and Harrison and his fellow trainees were reprimanded for failing to call out the dangerous sighting. But it ended up a good story. The Lurleen ultimately survived the war and was finally returned to Matson Lines in mid-1946. She had been pushed hard and performed heroically during her war years. Now it was time to restore her to her pre-war luxury. In 1947, Lurleen underwent a significant refit at the Bethlehem Alameda Shipyard in Alameda, California. The Matson Line didn't just want to restore her to her pre-war configuration. They would seize the opportunity to modernize the vessel and make her even more luxurious at a cost of $20 million, a huge price tag at the time. Her updated design was an attractive mix of mid-century modern and tasteful tropical accents designed by Raymond Loy of New York. These improvements included updates to her passenger cabins and would introduce luxurious new lanai suites. These suites feature large floor-to-ceiling windows that prove deeply popular with passengers, and don't feel too terribly different from the balcony cabins found on contemporary cruise ships. Lurleen's first post-war voyage from San Francisco to Honolulu took place on April 15, 1948. Her arrival in Honolulu was met with huge fanfare by the local community as she signaled a triumphant shift from wartime anxiety back to a tropical vacation paradise. The 1950s were undoubtedly Lurleen's heyday. Matson Line's innovation, focus on luxury and service, and keen marketing efforts made the Matson name and Lurleen synonymous with Hawaiian culture. They did everything they could to make a voyage on their liners a part of the vacation experience. They featured popular hula and ukulele classes and were one of the first lines to hire entertainment directors. Lurleen became a pop culture staple appearing in countless songs, books, magazines, television appearances, and films. Matson Line's PR clearly knew what they were doing. But as the 1950s came to a close, passenger numbers began to fall as jetliners between the mainland and Hawaii gave serious competition to the five-day voyages offered by Lurleen and her sisters. Somewhat ironically, Matson Lines briefly operated their own airline after World War II using a set of Douglas DC-4s. But the short-lived airline was ultimately forced to cease operation when political pressure from Pan Am made it difficult for the line to obtain federal operating authority. But I guess Matson got the last laugh since Matson is still operating and Pan Am is, well, you know. Lurleen's service with Matson Lines came to an abrupt end in 1963 when she limped into Los Angeles with serious mechanical issues in her port turbine. The repairs for the aging liner were deemed too expensive. She was put up for sale and her sister, the Matsonia, was brought out of retirement and renamed. 
you guessed it, Lurleen. Matson would continue to offer passenger services until the 1970s, but as passenger numbers fell, they gradually shifted focus back to their more lucrative cargo operations. They continue to operate today and even have a brand spanking new Lurleen. This video's Lurleen served a long and prosperous career with Matson Lines, dominating both the 1930s and the 1950s, but her passenger carrying days were far from over. X marks the spot that provides a half century of Greek heritage and tradition and a cruise with a variety. Lurleen was purchased by the Greek owned Chandris Lines in 1963 and rechristened RHMS Elenis. Not as good of a name as Lurleen. She was the line's third passenger ship purchased to replace their second, the Brittany, which caught fire and became a total loss in April 1963 while in dry dock. Alanis's engines were repaired and she was transported to Smith's Dock, North Shields in the United Kingdom, where she underwent a major refit for her new purpose of transporting immigrants from the UK to Australia. She emerged with a new, more modern streamlined look, complete with tapered funnels. Her passenger accommodations were expanded to 1,668 in a single class configuration. She sailed her maiden voyage on December 30th, 1963, kicking off a decade of 50 voyages between Southampton and Australia. These included several round the world voyages and occasional cruises. She proved very successful for the Chandris lines, but by the mid 1970s, with the introduction of long-haul flights, demand for the UK to Australia immigration routes began to dwindle. It's always planes. Her final immigration voyage took place on August 30th, 1977. After that, she spent the next six months cruising out of Sydney before leaving Australia for good. She returned to Europe where she would spend the next few years offering cruises on the Mediterranean. But the liner was showing her age and in 1980, she was pulled from service and laid up in Parama Bay, where she would remain for several years with her fate in limbo. Ultimately, several of her parts were used to restore her sister ship, the Britannis, formerly one of Lurleen's original Matson sisters, the Monterey. Finally, in 1987, Alanis was scrapped in Taiwan, bringing her nearly 60-year life to an end. Lurleen and her Matson sisters were groundbreaking ships that paved the way for modern day cruising. They played a major role in building Hawaii's tourism industry, and their advertising and onboard experiences shaped the American perception of Hawaiian culture. From the moment you stepped on board to the moment you arrived in Hawaii, Matson carefully orchestrated an experience that went far beyond mere transportation. From hula dancers and lays to unique menu designs, just like modern day cruising, Matson made the voyage a key part of the destination. For decades, Lurleen was Hawaii. Her name, mentioned so many times in this video, was synonymous with the island paradise she helped share with the world. Thank you everyone for watching. I really should have just named this Too Many Lurleens. If you enjoyed this video, or just the name Lurleen, Help out this channel by hitting that like button and leave a comment telling me which Lurleen is your favorite, human, ship, or yacht. And if you want more ocean liner history, subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every month, and if you're extra nice, I'll try to squeeze out more. I'm absolutely blown away by how fast this channel has grown, and your support means the world to me. I've got a lot more great videos planned, so be on the lookout.